When painting your classic car, you know, there's some variables that you got to consider in order to get a good match, especially if you're doing like painting a separate panel or, you know, a, a complete car. The undercolor, the what's painted underneath your paint can affect what the final color is. And here to help us make sense of it all is Terry Wright. Terry, how is uh, how does your undercolor affect your final paint? Well, when you're finally deciding to paint your car, you really got to consider about consider what the undercolor color is used. There's a light and medium colors can be very transparent and take many coats to achieve co complete coverage. Most new vehicles today don't have complete coverage and the, the undercoat color becomes part of the color we see. Sometimes this is even intentional to achieve a desired result. You may like how a red metallic looks over a light gray versus a dark gray. Yellows and oranges look really good, look the best when they're painted over white. And I have a couple of panels here. I'd like to kind of show you that to give you an example. Sure. And what we're talking about. Let's take a look. So let me just back up just a little bit on the, right. on the most new cars today, their, their, their coverage is not there. They're not covered. Yeah. So we're and, seeing the undercoat. Yeah. And, it, and a lot of the paints are formulated. So they're not, to me at least, they're not as opaque as they once were. They're, they're just not as much solids in it that would just hide everything. But not to say that in the old days mm -hmm. <laughs> that that wasn't true also. It just, we just put on more and more paint. The, uh, what I have, you know, noticed is that, you're, you know, back in the day when we'd paint a car, you know, it wasn't unusual. You see a couple spots right before you're, you're going to go hit the paint. You do you know, a quick touch up a few things with a different color primer. And nowadays, you know, you're pretty, pretty taboo. Uh, you're right about that, and that happens a lot. Um, it's, it wasn't unusual for us to go ahead and repair something and, and throw a little gray primer on something and paint it and go, what the heck happened here? I can see exactly where the primer is. Well, this is what's happening. Mm -hmm. um, it's not, uh, it's, it's, it's a lot more prevalent today with base coat clear coats than it was single stages. Like you are talking yep. about back in the day, there's a lot more pigment load and it just covered a lot better. But now the color is just there to be pretty. Mm -hmm. It's not giving you the protection at all. And in manufacturing, a um, couple reasons. They're gonna save a lot of money if they don't spray the coverage. Mm -hmm. And they also have robots that apply very uniform and they can put on very thin layers of paint, uniform. Mm -hmm. um, that's what typically happens. So when we're in the refinish end of it, or if you're working on your car and you use a different color undercoat, that's really important to hmm. take that into consideration um, because that has now become a part of your finish, whether, you, whether you like it or not. Yep. So a couple panels here. Okay. Um, the red one is, uh, there's four coats of red over the over this uh, white, black, tan. So the, you have the same amount of red across, across the whole, the whole panel. The mm -hmm. only difference here is you've painted here, this looks like a tan mm -hmm. and then a white a gray and a black. Exactly. And those are just the undercoat. That's the undercoat. So it could be your sealer. Okay. It could be a, a ground coat that you, maybe you had a bunch of leftover paint that you want to use up. You can put that down first, mm -hmm. you know, but that will change your color. Yeah. And I know from my own experience, you know, uh, having painted cars where I like to throw on a whole coat of epoxy primer before and then I can scuff that and I got a good sealed up solid surface. But so like the, the primer, the epoxy primer I select, the color is going to affect how my final paint looks. There's, there's no doubt about it. No doubt about it. So if it's all one color, it doesn't matter because you're doing the whole car. Yep. But if you're coming back and refinishing or spotting in something you, you have to repair, that's really important. So, uh, Good to, good to remember what you use, so you mm -hmm. can use it again and duplicate it again. Yeah. There's no doubt about that. Um, yellow one over here, uh, there's different, uh, I don't know how well it's gonna show, but there's four separate coats of yellow on here, one, two, three, four, over uh, the white, black, and tan also. Um, I had said that yellows work best over white. Yeah. And, and it really see, does. You can see this where you've only got one coat of yellow 
over a white background and suddenly you have a nice vibrant mm -hmm. yellow there. Right. I've had uh, I've had plenty of painters that are that will paint over a gray or a, a charcoal and go, I can't I gotta put ten coats on to get coverage. Use white first. And, yeah. and whoa, I got two coats and it looks great. Hmm. Does you don't have to put it on as a sealer. You can mix it up a base coat and put it down first. It doesn't it doesn't care what it's over. You okay. can put a coat of white down first if you if you want. If you don't want okay. to seal it again. Sure. So it's all ready to go and you don't need to seal. Yeah. But very important. That undercoat really makes a difference. There are some colors today that their the undercoat is a part of the uh, about uh, is a part of the, fin the final finish, and it's considered a layer. So you can take a three stage paint to a four stage paint, and it's just because of the undercoat. Okay, yeah, that's, I know it's built in that way. My, I know years ago I had a custom painter that kind of showed me the trick of painting white underneath reds, and he says that's how I get a real I get a red that everybody wonders where'd you get that red? Yeah, and it was all because he was using a white undercoat. Yeah. So. I'll, I'll refer back to uh, some, another topic we talked about, and, and um, it's, it's light and light source, and color is reflected light. Yep. Well, over white, that light's going down to that white, and it's kicking back, and all that light's coming back out. So that's why the whites really, make, really will show that much okay. better, where if it's black, the black will absorb that light. It'll be harder for the color. You can even see that here, where your darker ones become more muddy and, yeah. and darker. Yeah where the white, the red over the white just really pops. So Terry, as a professional painter, do you have an undercolor that you recommend or choose to use for your stuff? Well, when I'm given a choice, there's definitely uh, colors that I'd like to use under certain colors. The yellow is, is a big one. That one I'm going white all the time mm -hmm. because it just makes me uh, look like I have coverage quicker. Okay. The red, um, I like using this tan undercoat because mm -hmm. of the light reflectancy value. It's pretty similar, that tan, to that red. If I were to take all the color out and make them in the gray scale, they look really similar. Okay. So I'm getting an undercoat that's pretty similar on the light reflectancy value of that red. So I'm not fighting like a dark, a black, take a lot more color to, to uh, get the results I want, where the tan will get me there quicker. So it's all about tricking the eye. Mm -hmm. But there definitely are advantages to using a, uh, an undercoat. There are some, like I said, there's some colors that uh, require a certain undercoat, mm -hmm. and you have to use those to get the color you're looking for. But when, you're, when they don't tell you to do that, then it's whatever you want to use, and you just go with experience. But yeah, that's, these are two really great examples of that. Yellow is white for me, red is tan, if I have that uh, for an option for tan. Great, great, great advice. And, you know, I'm sure, you know, if... if you know, the, our members are wondering which one should they use. You can always test it. You know, it, it doesn't take any time to do a spray out and test it and see. Then you have something to hold up and actually decide out in the daylight what you want to use. Right. 